The death of George Floyd at the hands of police sparked protests and riots around the country. But the early spontaneous protests were followed by 19 months of unrest with some of the worst rioting perpetrated by self-described anti-fascists, or Antifa, in the Pacific Northwest. How did these often violent extremists take over whole city blocks as they did in Seattle, or engage in 200 days of nightly rioting as they did in Portland without local police or officials stopping them? One part of the answer is they had lawyers funded by deep pockets on the left. The National Lawyers Guild, a nonprofit group of left-wing attorneys and other legal professionals, were key in helping coordinate legal support for more than 20,000 arrested protesters in 2020. In his book, Unmasked, Inside Antifa's Radical Plan to Destroy Democracy, journalist Andy Ngo went so far as to call the Guild, in effect, the legal arm of Antifa. While Americans watched their cities burn night after night on the evening news, the Guild arranged legal representation for protesters and sent letters to the Biden administration urging them to drop charges against rioters, even criminals who had firebombed buildings or menaced innocent citizens. While the mainstream media mostly hid the Guild's role in these protests, the group's aid to extremists goes way back. Its efforts to foster and protect radicalism through legal work began in the late 1930s. By 1940, the group was so dominated by Communist Party members that its left-of-center non-communist members were abandoning it en masse, as three-quarters of the membership resigned. Later in the 1960s, some Guild members were involved with extremist groups like the Weather Underground, which was dedicated to the violent overthrow of the U.S. government. The Weather Underground's tactics included intimidation, bomb-making, and calls for assassinations of police and military members. Bernadine Dorn, the famous wife of Barack Obama's friend Bill Ayers, became the National Lawyers Guild's student organizer in 1967 and spoke at the Guild's 1970 convention while simultaneously serving as top Weather Underground leader. In his book, Days of Rage, America's Radical Underground, the FBI, and the Forgotten Age of Revolutionary Violence, journalist Brian Burrow writes that a relatively small group of radical lawyers, almost all of whom belonged to the National Lawyers Guild, were by far the most important single source of money for the weathermen. The Guild's work of sowing discord, promoting violent radicalism, and defending the purveyors of both continues today as the Guild protects extremists like Antifa. In fact, the Guild has publicly supported Antifa's actions, declaring that it will continue to support anti-fascists and anti-racists in the streets and in the courts, and will not be swayed by the argument that hateful, dangerous speech should be tolerated at any cost. Ominously, the Guild is growing. According to its 2020 annual report, membership remained relatively flat at fewer than 2,500 from 2005 to 2015. But after 2015, it began to grow dramatically, with 5,000 new members joining its ranks in 2020 alone. That roughly coincides with Antifa's own growth. As radicals spouted woke orthodoxy while they burned down American cities during the summer of 2020, they were protected and sheltered by highly educated and politically aligned attorneys at the National Lawyers Guild. Meanwhile, Americans who assumed the riots were about the death of George Floyd didn't realize the attempted overthrow of the rule of law that they were watching had been planned nearly a century in advance. <laughs>